Excuse me, little dog. Hello, right, guys. It is a chilly October evening here in the fall of 2024. Uh, somehow we have slogged into Thursday night. That would be October 3rd, 2024, I believe. And, uh, good Lord, I am just now finishing up this long day of whatever this long day we have, me and the little dog have spent doing. The little dog has seemed to have hurt his leg. We have a crippled little dog today. Uh, Anyway, getting around, trying to figure out what to rant about, and, and I'm seeing a pattern developing on this channel that pretty much everything I do now, every article I find now, it, it, is pretty much, it ain't going to happen. Uh, and I, I could pretty much just make this channel called the Ain't Gonna Happen channel with this incredible barrage of unadulterated horseshit hopium, and I am embarrassed to admit, embarrassed to admit that my nose is running on camera. Oh, God, I tell you, cold and flu season moving in. Uh, that one of my heroes, Richard Heinberg, is is slipping into this apocalyptic hopium. But, but, but what I'm training myself to do is just not read the hopium bullshit uh, at the end of it. Just read, you, 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 know, the, you know the pattern. Uh, anyone who's heard any of my interviews or anyone else where you, you get someone on, interview them for an hour, for 55 minutes, they, they talk about how fucked we are, and, and then in the last five minutes, they, they I, I don't know where, uh, they pull this bullshit, uh, ain't gonna happen, hopium, happy horseshit, uh, and, and start talking this bullshit in the last five minutes. So I think what I'm going to start doing uh, is six days a week, just read the first 80% of these uh, essays uh, talking about why it ain't going to happen and, and just skip the bullshit at the end and you'll have a pretty good chronicle of the collapse. And uh, it's been a while since we've checked in uh, with our old friend from the Post Carbon Institute, Richard Heinberg, uh, who's pretty, he, who is not a clueless moron, I want to, I want to send a shout out to, uh, Reynard Loki, fellow Doomer, Reynard Loki and his, uh, excellent site, Earth Food Life, for sharing this with us, and now I'm going to share it with you. What would a real energy transition look like? Uh, and, and, and then the, the subtitle to the story uh, by Richard Heinberg is the seven steps that could help build a social movement and ensure a sustainable future. Well, I, I will probably come back to uh, the end of this article and the ain't going to happen uh, part of it uh, because I do like one of his seven steps being reducing the population of this goddamn planet. But anyway, we're going to read <coughs> probably until this camera collapses. We're going to read the uh, the part before Richard uh, disappears into a post-carbon fantasy world. So, all right, Richard Heinberg, you have done your homework. So tell us, what would a real energy transition look like? <clears throat> the transition from relying overwhelmingly on fossil fuels is using 
fossil fuels to using alternative low carbon energy sources could be unstoppable and exponential, according to some experts. A boosterish attitude by many renewable energy advocates is understandable. Overcoming people's climate despair and sowing confidence could help muster the groundswell of motivation needed to end our collective fossil fuel dependency. But occasionally a reality check is required. So Richard Heinberg is going to give us a reality check before disappearing into non-reality La La Land. Okay, in reality, in reality, energy transitions are a big deal and typically take centuries to unfold. Historically, they've been transformative for societies, whether we're speaking of humanity's taming of fire hundreds of thousands of years ago, the agricultural revolution 10,000 years ago, or our adoption of fossil fuels starting roughly 200 years ago. Given, you know, today, in 2024, given, one, the current size of the human population, there are eight times as many of us alive today compared to 1820 when the fossil fuel energy transition was underway. Number two, the vast scale of the global economy. And number three, the unprecedented speed with which the transition will have to be made to avert catastrophic climate change. A rapid renewable energy transition is easily the most ambitious enterprise our species has ever undertaken, which is why it ain't gonna happen, Richard. Richard Heinberg is not a clueless moron. He, he knows as well as I do it ain't going to happen. But anyway, continuing with the reality check, the evidence, you know, if you care about stuff like evidence, that stuff, the evidence shows that the transition is still in its earliest stages and at the current rate, it will fail to avert a climate catastrophe. I think you can interview people in Asheville, North Carolina for an amen to that. <clears throat> this will result in the death of an unimaginable number of people or forced, I would say, and forced migration with most ecosystems transformed beyond recognition. And that's really all you need to know. That is what the evidence shows. Every bit of the evidence shows we are completely fucked and there's not a goddamn thing where we're going to do about it. Uh, your, your seven little... Anyway, uh, we will unpack why the transition, you know, from fossil fuels to uh, to whatever they're trying to transition to is such an uphill slog. Yes, then we'll explore what a real energy transition would look like and how to make it happen. All right, why this, this, what I talk about every day is so far not a real transition. <clears throat> Despite trillions of dollars being spent on renewable energy infrastructure, carbon emissions are still increasing. 
not decreasing and the share of world energy coming from fossil fuels is only slightly less today than 20 years ago. In 2024, the world will use more oil, more coal, and more natural gas than it did in 2023 is what the evidence shows. While the U.S. and many European nations have seen a declining share of their electricity production coming from coal, the continuing global growth in fossil fuel usage and CO2 emissions overshadows any calls for celebration. And he has a bunch of links. I'll put the link onto this and then he links you to all of his source information uh, sourcing why we're so fucked. So why is the rapid deployment of renewable energy not resulting in declining fossil fuel usage? The main culprit is economic growth which consumes more energy and more materials. So far, the annual increase in the world's energy usage, usage has exceeded the energy added each year from new solar panels and wind turbines. Fossil fuels have supplied the difference. So, for now, we, we are not experiencing a real energy transition. All that humanity is doing is adding energy from renewable sources to the growing amount of energy it derives from fossil fuels. The much touted energy transition could, if somewhat cynically, be described as just an aspirational grail. Uh, one more time, I, I, I don't know why this is so hard uh, to explain. Uh, one more time, guys, the entire energy demand pie is growing every year. Okay, more and more people are making the energy demand pie getting bigger and bigger, so throwing more of these goddamn solar panels and wind turbines in the mix, while it might look like it, 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 it's making a bigger percentage, it's making, the percentages are based on a bigger pie. This, I don't know why this is so hard for people to wrap their heads around. It's bullshit. And, uh, and, and, and I'm, I'm afraid that uh, Richard Heinberg uh, is buying in uh, to all of this bright green lie bullshit anyway. I, I, I mean, uh, he's making the assumption uh, that your, your goddamn solar panels and wind turbines and all of this happy horse shit uh, doesn't have its own set of problems. Uh, every bit as bad as fossil fuels. So it's not doing a goddamn thing. So uh, first you have to make the big assumption here uh, that someone as smart as Richard Heinberg is falling for. That, that it makes a fucking bit of difference. Solar panel or, a, or internal combustion engine. Pull your head at it anyway. Back to Richard. This is Richard's rant. How long would it take for humanity to fully replace fossil fuels with renewable 
energy sources, which is a, I need to shut up. We all get it, Sam. You understand that these renewable energy sources are as bad for the planet, if not worse, than fossil fuels and are 100% dependent on fossil fuels. But I'm going to put that on the back burner. And uh, so let, let's take a flight of fantasy. Let's play along with Richard Heinberg that, that these goddamn uh, little solar panels and windmills uh, make a goddamn bit of difference anyway. Okay, we got to we got to have a what's it called a suspension of disbelief. All right, we're going to suspend disbelief uh, onto the center core of Richard's argument here. Okay. So how long would it take for humanity to fully replace fossil fuels with renewable energy sources, accounting for both the growth trajectory of solar and wind power and the continued expansion of the global economy at 3% per year? Economic models suggest the world could obtain most of its electricity by from renewables by 2060, though many nations are not on a path to reach even this modest marker. However, electricity represents only about 20% of the world's final energy usage transitioning the other 80% of energy usage would take longer, likely many decades. I have to uh, take a drink after my suspension of disbelief is, is straining me here. All right. However, to avert catastrophic climate change, the global scientific community says we must achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2050 in just 25 years. And again, it sounds like Richard Heinberg is buying in to this unadulterated horseshit myth of net zero. He's buying into the smoke and mirrors. So I have to suspend disbelief a second time. I'm having a hard enough time suspending my disbelief with that first whopper. And now I got to suspend my disbelief again. God damn it. Yes, little dog. Since it seems physically impossible to get all of our energy from renewables that soon while still growing the economy at 3%, the IPCC assumes that humanity will somehow adopt carbon capture and sequestration technologies at scale, including technologies that have shown to be ineffective, even though there is no existing way of paying for this vast industrial build out. This wishful thinking on the part of the IPCC is surely proof that the energy transition is not happening at sufficient speed. The energy transition is not happening at the required pace because governments, businesses, and many advocates have set unrealistic goals of reducing emissions while still pursuing economic growth. Also, the tactical and strategic global management of the effort is insufficient. Do you think so? We will address these problems and provide answers concerning how we can support a true energy transition. 
So what is the core of the transition? Wow. And the core of the energy transition is the reason it ain't gonna happen. The core of the energy transition is using less energy. Wow. At the heart of most discussions about the energy transition lie two enormous assumptions. That the transition will leave us with a global industrial economy similar to today's in terms of its scale and services, and that this future renewable energy economy will continue to grow as the fossil fueled economy has done in recent decades. But I'm glad to hear this, Richard. I'm, I'm regaining faith in you, brother. But both of these assumptions are unrealistic. They flow from irrational expectations. We want the energy transition to be completely painless with no sacrifice of profit or convenience. That goal is understandable since it would presumably be easier to enlist the public, governments, and businesses in an enormous new task if no extra cost is incurred. Though the history of overwhelming societal effort and sacrifice during wartime might lead us to question that presumption. But the energy transition will undoubtedly entail cost. Uh-oh, I don't want to hear this shit. Aside from tens of trillions of dollars in required monetary investment, the energy transition will require energy, lots of it. It will take energy to build solar panels, wind turbines, heat pumps, electric vehicles, electric farm machinery, zero carbon aircraft, batteries, and the rest of the vast panoply of devices that would be required to operate an electrified global industrial economy at the current scale. Okay, so I, again, my, I'm so glad that my faith in uh, Richard Heinberg is being restored and I can scale back my suspension of disbelief. Several teams of scientists have been seeking to estimate the size of that pulse. According to a study published in the journal Nature in November 2022, transition-related emissions will be substantial, ranging anywhere from 70 to 395 billion metric tons of CO2 with a cross scenario average of 195 gigatons, otherwise known as, as 195 million, um, 195 billion metric tons, the equivalent of more than five years worth of global carbon CO2 emissions at current rates. The only way, the only way to minimize these transition related emissions would be first to aim to build a substantially smaller global energy system than the one we're trying to replace, which is why one reason it ain't going to happen. And second, to significantly reduce energy for non 
transition-related purposes, including transportation and manufacturing cornerstones of our current economy, which is the one more reason it ain't gonna happen, Richard. In addition to energy, the transition will require materials. While our current fossil fuel energy regime extracts billions of tons of coal, oil, and gas, plus much smaller amounts of iron, bauxite, and other ores for making drills, pipelines, pumps, and other related equipment, the construction of renewable energy infrastructure at commensurate scale would require far larger quantities of non-fuel raw materials, including copper, iron, aluminum, lithium, iridium, gallium, don't forget sand, and rare earth elements. So uh, what, what this means, you, you understand all, all, this, uh, all this talking about you know, oil and gas drilling on federal lands, that's a fraction. The, I mean, the, 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 actual, the actual initial assault on the planet by the planet eaters is much smaller under a fall, if, if you get the burning out of it, the, uh, you guys understand the actual planet eating involved in the fossil fuel industry is much smaller ecological footprint on this planet than the renewable energy. What he's saying here is to bring down carbon emissions, we're going to have to uh, just completely go into overdrive with literally eating the planet. It, it, you know, it, it, it's all bullshit. It, it, it's the big, this energy transition is the biggest fucking lie, uh, well, certainly not on just of the 21st century, but possibly in the history of humanity. It's unadulterated horseshit. Every fucking thing about it. It's a fucking lie, people. It's a fucking lie. Anyway, that was me talking, not Richard. Back to Richard. <clears throat> Where were we? While some estimates suggest that global reserves of these elements are sufficient for the initial build out of renewable energy infrastructure at scale, there are still two big challenges after that. First, obtaining these materials will require greatly expanding extractive industries along with their supply chains. Chains three industries are inherently polluting and inevitably degrade the land. For example, more than 125 tons of rock and soil, not, not to mention what they call overburden. Overburden is the term, you, you know, for the biosphere, for the forest and the grasslands that's growing on top of this shit. It's called overburden, is what they call the biosphere, the living skin of the planet. Okay. Uh, for example, after they, they get rid of that pesky overburden, more than 125 tons of rock and soil must be displaced to produce one ton of copper ore. The rock to metal ratio is even worse for some other ores. According to the World Economic Forum, quote, as the push for clean energy technologies continues, demand for certain critical minerals is forecast to rise by up to 500 percent 
and I have actually heard 1,000% coming from the actual mining industries. Mining operations often take place on indigenous people's lands, and I'm not going to get into a noble savage rant, and the tailings from those operations pollute rivers and streams. Non-human species, can you say our fellow earthlings, and communities in the global south, is Asheville, North Carolina, part of the global south, are already traumatized by land degradation and toxification, greatly expanding resource extraction, now including deep sea mining, would only multiply the wounds. The second material challenge is the reason, another reason it ain't going to happen, is that renewable energy infrastructure must be replaced periodically. Replaced every 20 to 30 years. Even if Earth's minerals are sufficient for the first, for the first full-scale build out of panels, turbines, and batteries, will limited mineral abundance permit continual replacement? The answer is no, something's got to give. It ain't going to happen. It's a violation of physics. It ain't going to happen. Something is going to give. This ain't going to happen, guys. It cannot happen. Transition advocates, and Richard Heinberg is one of the biggest energy transition advocates on the planet, transition advocates say that we can avoid depleting the planet's ores by recycling minerals and metals after constructing the first iteration of solar and wind technology. However, recycling is never complete with some materials degraded in the process. One analysis suggests recycling would only buy a couple of centuries worth of time, couple of centuries, my ass, before depletion would lead to the end of replaceable renewable energy machines, and that is assuming a widespread, coordinated implementation of recycling on an unprecedented scale. Again, the only real long-term solution, say he is still believing in solutions, is to aim for a much smaller global energy system, which ain't gonna happen. A social transition, yes, from fossil fuel dependency to reliance on low carbon energy sources will be impossible without substantially reducing overall energy usage and maintaining this lower rate of energy usage indefinitely. This transition is not just about building lots of solar panels, wind turbines, and batteries. It is about organizing society differently so that it uses much less energy and gets that energy it uses from sources that are sustainable over the long run which is uh, everything that this man has said it is all the reasons this ain't going to happen. And, and, and then he, at the end of the story, uh, he comes up with his unadulterated horseshit, ain't going to happen, how we could achieve this in seven steps. Yes, we need to act now to turn the tide on the climate crisis. Yes, by taking these seven steps. We can ensure that we end the cycle of destruction and move towards 
a more sustainable way of living ain't gonna happen, Richard. And I will see, uh, see I already have an overflowing uh, well of ain't gonna happen. Uh, I I anyway, but thank you, Richard, for up to that point for giving us a classic uh, chronicle of the collapse. And uh, I gotta get some energy. I gotta get some electric heat energy blowing on me while I still can. My guys.